just a simple point, when you see this inverse string function in there, right, you know that you can't play the simple algebraic game that you can play in the first question, you've got to do something else. Okay? Now, the standard answer is, well, guess what? This guy doesn't like to play the algebraic game, but we can make him. Because there are things that we know about tan inverse that can turn him into standard algebra that we can deal with. Right? Think of all the things you learned in maths over the last two years. Right? Here's how I'm going to begin. I'm going to say, let y equals. And I'm going to define this. Now, the reason why this is useful is because if I prove this is greater than 0, can you catch that? This is a constant theme in inequalities. It's easy to prove that things are positive because we know lots of things about positive things. If I can prove this thing is positive, that this is greater than zero, then I've proved this. Done. So how do I prove that this is positive? How do I make it play with algebra? Well, you differentiate, right? Because then, what is the derivative of this? Well, let's have a look. X differentiate, you get one. Okay. Here, what's going to happen? Um, you got chain rule happening, right? So I see there's a minus here and there's a minus there. So the derivative of the inside function is negative one. So it's going to cancel these. Is that okay? So I'm going to put a plus there, right? And then what's the regular way that you differentiate tan inverse? It's one on one plus this square, right? One plus this square. Okay. So far so good. There's the derivative. So in other words, this tells me how this is behaving. I need to show that this is greater than zero without, oops, sorry, without the um, boundary. And then I've got this result, okay, for this particular domain. So how do I do it? How do I use a derivative to show that something is always going to be positive? Let's think about things that are always positive, right? If you had something nice and neat, like say a parabola, right? You could get the discriminant. You should you can show the discriminant's negative and the leading coefficient is positive, and up it goes, right? But oh, I don't have a quadratic, so clearly not the discriminant, right? What other kinds of graphs are always positive? <laughs> oh, you could now. Oh, so close. If you had if you had this, it's not always. Positive, I have the boundary there. So this is a dud, okay? Yeah. But we're overthinking it, right? <laughs> if I have a graph that looks like this, right? It's a bit random, but if it's all... Oh, sorry. Let's just smooth that out a bit. If it's increasing, if it's increasing, and I know at some point, you know, over here, that it's going to be greater than 1, and all, I'm, I'm, I've got a fairly restricted domain here, right? I don't need all real values. Then, then I'm done. Look, see, if I have this point here, and this is the domain I'm interested in. Look, it's positive. So, what do I need to establish about this derivative to show that it's increasing? To show that this is greater than zero, I need to show that this is greater than zero. This is very, very simple, okay? There's a couple of ways you can do it. You could appeal to the discriminant of this guy, right? Because look, positive, positive. If this is positive, they're all positive, right? A simpler way to do it, though, is just Go algebra, right? Let's put these two together. This is two fractions, right? So I'm going to go 1 plus 1 minus x squared plus 1 over this denominator, right? Well, that's just 2, isn't it? Okay, now have a look at all the pieces. Have a look at all the pieces. I've got 2 and 1. Pretty sure the last time I checked they were positive, right? But... I also know this other piece, right? 1 minus x squared, right? In this domain, look, not inclusive of 1. Not inclusive of 1, that's important. That's greater than 0. So I've got all of these positive pieces, right? So therefore, the derivative in the domain that I'm interested in is always positive. So I've established it's increasing. Now, of course, increasing is not enough. Right? Because if I have this, this is increasing, but look, it's got a whole chunk of it that's negative. So what must I establish? I need, I need some value. I need some value. Right? I need something like this, or something like this. Right? And look at what our domain is. It's x is greater than 1. So if I take the boundary, right? if I can show that at that point, it's above the axis, and then it's just going to increase from there, it's never going to come back. Right? 
When you pop this into here, you get y equals 1 minus tan inverse of 0, which is 0. So you get 1, right? So now I have a picture, right? At x equals 1, y equals 1. And the derivative tells me it's increasing from then on. So it's always above the axis. And since y I define to be this, right? therefore, okay, I'm running out of space, x minus 10 inverse of that thing is greater than 0, and now you just move the other guy over. Done. Okay. Now, that's the standard way. That's the standard way. When you see trig, don't panic, right? Particularly inverse trig, because inverse trig just disguises algebra, and we can deal with algebra just like we did before. 